and stuff. Okay. Chapter one. We're reading O Pioneers by Willa Cather. This is chapter one. One January day, 30 years ago, the little town of Hanover, anchored on a windy Nebraska tableland, was trying not to be blown away. A mist of fine snowflakes was curling and eddying around the cluster of low drab buildings huddled on the gray prairie under a gray sky. The dwelling houses were set about haphazard on the tough prairie sod. Some of them looked as if they had been moved in overnight, and others as if they were straying off by themselves, headed straight for the open plain. None of them had any appearance of permanence, and the howling wind blew under them as well as over them. The main street was a deeply rutted road, now frozen hard, which ran from the squat red railway station and the grain elevator at the north end of the town to the lumber yard and the horse pond at the south end. On either side of this road straggled two uneven rows of wooden buildings, the general merchandise stores, the two banks, the drug store, the feed store, the saloon, the post office. The board sidewalks were gray with trampled snow, but at two o'clock in the afternoon, the shopkeepers, having come back from dinner, were keeping well behind their frosting, frosty windows. The children were all in school, and there was nobody abroad in the streets but a few rough-looking countrymen in coarse overcoats with their long caps pulled down to their noses. Some of them had brought their wives to town, and now and then a red or a plaid shawl flashed out of one store into the shelter of another. At the hitch bars along the street, a few heavy workhorses harnessed to farm wagons shivered under their blankets. About the station, everything was quiet, for there would not be another train until night. On the sidewalk in front of one of the stores sat a little Swede boy, crying bitterly. He was about five years old. His black cloth coat was much too big for him and made him look like a little old man. His shrunken brown flannel dress had been washed many times and left a long stretch of stocking between the hem of his skirt and the tops of his clumsy, copper-toed shoes. His cap was pulled down over his ears. His nose and his chubby cheeks were chapped and red with cold. He cried quietly, and the few people who hurried by did not notice him. He was afraid to stop anyone, afraid to go into the store and ask for help. So he sat wringing his long sleeves and looking up a telephone pole beside him, whimpering, My kitten, oh my kitten, her will freeze. At the top of the pole crouched a shivering gray kitten, mewing faintly and clinging desperately to the wood with her claws. The boy had been left at the store while his sister went to the doctor's office, and in her absence, a dog had chased his kitten up the pole. The little creature had never been so high before, and she was too frightened to move. Her master was sunk in despair. He was a little country boy, and this village was, to him, a very strange and perplexing place, where people wore fine clothes and had hard hearts. He always felt shy and awkward here and wanted to hide, hide behind things for fear someone might laugh at him. Just now, he was too unhappy to care who laughed. At last, he seemed to see a ray of hope. His sister was coming, and he got up and ran toward her in his heavy shoes. Click red. 